I am Yi Kim Xiao. I am her spokesperson. Um, and I am sorry that she's not able to be here in person for obvious reasons. Uh, she is um, out campaigning and maximizing every minute we have uh, to win the election. Uh, but I can guarantee that after she's elected, she will have an opportunity to uh, meet with all of you um, with an international uh, press event. But I want to welcome all of the international press, the scholars and observers of this election. And I want to thank you for your interest uh, in Taiwan's politics and in, for your support for Taiwan's democracy. And it's only the fifth election uh, that we have had in our history. Taiwan is a young democracy, and it's important for us that the international community continues to express its interest in our uh, democratic development. Um, I will start by giving you a brief introduction of uh, the themes of our campaign, and uh, we will also uh, show you some quick, short videos of some of the uh, pictures and video footings of um, some campaign activities, and then I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I will conduct this uh, press conference in English. Um, if there are Japanese speakers, uh, members of the Japanese press, I have a colleague, uh, Dr. Lin, Dr. Professor Lin Chen Wei. Um, he will be available afterwards uh, to speak to Japanese press in Japanese language if necessary. Um, first, I will briefly go over, I will introduce to you uh, the major issues uh, involved in this campaign. Uh, we are, uh, the theme that we have presented uh, is fairness and justice, or Gongping Zheng Yi. And uh, we are focusing on fair economic opportunities and social justice. And this is in response to a number of problems uh, that have uh, been quite serious in Taiwan society over the last few years, such as uh, rising housing prices or unaffordable housing costs uh, in urban areas of Taiwan, um, jobs, uh, energy issues, uh, the problem of declining wages and declining income, or the growth in the income gap wealth disparity, etc., cetera, uh, are uh, serious issues on the top of the minds of the Taiwanese voters uh, that we need to respond to. Um, Cross-strait relations uh, have always been a very significant public policy matter in Taiwan. It continues to be a very important public policy area. But in this particular election, uh, it is especially relevant uh, in economic terms. Uh, our people are mainly concerned. Obviously, we understand that there are benefits and also risks in cross-strait economic interaction. And our voters are mainly concerned about how the benefits are distributed in Taiwan society and how the risks are managed. So the debate in this election is focused on these two areas. Uh, we have had a problem or we have been critical of the way that benefits have not been um, adequately distributed in our society over the last few years. For example, we have experienced a uh, GDP growth rate. Um, however, um, we believe that the benefits or the wealth created, the growth created, is concentrated only among a few select businesses or interest groups, and the general population does not feel or does not benefit from the economic interaction across the strait. Uh, we are not against the idea of engaging. In fact, um, we also have a policy of gradually normalizing our economic relationship with China. However, we feel um, quite strongly that the risks have to be well managed and that we do need to focus on distributing the growth and the benefits. We also tend to focus on the area of diversification of our global interests uh, versus uh, what we believe is Mindjo's policy of putting all his eggs in one basket, that is China, and focusing too much on the China relationship. We need to diversify our global relations, our global economic ties, and we feel that we need to deal with China along with the rest of the world instead of facing the world through only China. Um, 
So cross-strait policy remains a very important public policy area. It will continue to be. But again, the focus uh, tends to be on economic and social issues in this particular election. Um, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen has also proposed the concept, uh, once she is elected, elected the idea of a grand coalition. Uh, this is unprecedented in Taiwan politics. Uh, after all, we are a young democracy. We have not had a precedent or um, the practice of coalition politics in the past. However, um, in recent years, political divisions have deepened in Taiwan. Partisan politics are very serious to the extent that it consumes a lot of political energy that could be otherwise used for good governance and public policy. So the idea um, to deal with a grand coalition uh, it deals with power sharing uh, between the major political forces in Taiwan. It is a means to overcome a divided society uh, with a lot of internal confrontation. It's a consensus building process and it's also aimed to deal with the problem of the winner takes all situation that has happened um, in the previous election. Um, this campaign is very much uh, policy oriented. At least our campaign tends to be very much policy oriented. Although uh, what happens in uh, many elections around the world, uh, mudslinging or uh, personal attacks uh, have unfortunately um, been made against uh, Tsai Ing-wen. But we are nevertheless confident that we will continue with a very positive policy oriented campaign uh, as we uh, move into the last phase. Um, in addition to the slogan, Gong Ping Zheng Yi, or fairness and justice, which has been a main theme of this campaign, we've also emphasized another very important slogan on all of our posters and flags and banners, and that is Taiwan Di Yi Yu Zong Tong, or the first woman president of Taiwan. Uh, we are emphasizing this as a historical step uh, for progress in our society. Um, the fact that we have nominated the first ever woman presidential candidate and we may well produce the first woman president of Taiwan. Um, this is something that we are also emphasizing uh, in this particular campaign. Another unexpected evolution uh, that has uh, certainly been a very important part of our campaign has been the piggy bank uh, campaign. Um, and this uh, started a few months ago uh, when a grandfather brought his three little triplet um, grandchildren to make, try to make a political donation of three little piggy banks uh, to Dr. Tsai. And um, since, according to Taiwan law, it is not legal for non-voters to make political donations, um, our government immediately announced a possible punishment of these three little kids and investigation on their alleged illegal donation. Of course, we did not accept the donation of the three little kids. We returned the piggy banks, but uh, the um, fact of uh, government uh, possible intervention um, actually generated a backlash. And so many, many of our supporters started to um, campaign on piggy banks, and everybody started to bring in their little piggies uh, to the campaign uh, in small donations. And this evolved into a mass campaign. By the deadline last week for accepting piggy banks, we received over 143,000 individual little piggies. Um, and um, this uh, certainly became a very popular movement. It has helped our campaign in further consolidating our support on the base. And it has made our campaign truly representative of the people, of many, many small donations and this is not only symbolic of small financial contributions to the campaign, uh, it is also symbolic of the story of three little pigs confronting the big bad wolf. And uh, so we are a party of the people confronting the monstrous operation of the KMT, the big bad wolf. And uh, I will show you a short video of this um, piggy bank campaign um, after this briefing. And as you go out, maybe some of you saw this as you came into the campaign. Um, we used many of the, em the piggy banks that have been emptied uh, to build up a um, gate of victory, uh, the gate of triumph um, outside of our campaign 
um, office here. It's right around the corner if you didn't catch a look at it. Um, and the total amount of donations, uh, we reached about 200 million Taiwan dollars um, in uh, small piggy bank donations. So this is a very important part of this campaign. You'll see around a lot of the campaigns around the country and local campaigns, a lot of pigs on the theme of the campaign. And I'm just sharing this with you to explain why we have the image of a pig on many of our campaign items and um, local uh, propaganda. Um, now I'll go into some of the problems uh, that we have perceived uh, in this campaign. Uh, two major problems that we feel has had a negative impact on Taiwan's uh, growing and maturing democracy. Um, the first is the problem of the lack of neutrality in the government and the inappropriate use of government resources in this particular election campaign. And there are a number of examples. Um, first of all, a couple of weeks ago, a local magazine uh, published uh, documents and also information on a government national investigation bureau um, spying on our presidential candidate. And the information indicates that they're assigned, that the government assigned 28 agents, and all of them were named, um, and 28 agents to spy on Tsai Ing-wen, and the spying started last March, even became, before she became our former formal presidential candidate. We find this very much problematic. Information also reveals that um, members of the National Security Council, which um, directly reports to President Ma, uh, also sat in on investigation bureau meetings, uh, which is not within the legal um, framework or the government responsibilities um, assigned by our constitution. So we have found this very, very much problematic and a reversal to the old days when the party, the state, and the uh, judicial system were merged in a very partisan way. Uh, we have protested against this um, practice. Also, we have found uh, problematic the inappropriate use of state funding for media advertising, for imaging uh, for Ma ying um, and a lot of uh, propaganda and promotion. Uh, we calculated over the last year the government, the state, spent close to a total of 1.6 um, billion Taiwan dollars um, in state or government imaging, advertising. Um, that has also been part of this election campaign. We have found this problematic. We have also found problematic the inappropriate mobilization of civil servants. Um, government orders to mobilize civil servants to attend the political rallies of the KMT. Um, another very uh, serious problem uh, that uh, occurred a few weeks ago also uh, was the government uh, CEPD, the Economic Policy Planning uh, Commission, uh, forged document dates um, on documents uh, in an apparent attempt to frame Tsai ing for an allegation of embezzlement. And um, the government official later admitted to, to um, forging a date on documents that fortunately we also had copies of, the original copies. And so these are all examples of inappropriate state or government intervention in this particular election that does not make the election a completely fair one. Uh, but we are confident, nevertheless, of overcoming these problems that were even more serious during the time of martial law and the one-party authoritarian regime era in Taiwan's past. Um, another problem that we have had is a problem Chinese intervention in this election. Um, since our first ever presidential election in 1996, um, China has attempted to have an impact on the outcome of our elections. The first time they tried in our first election in 96 was through actual missile tests. Um, obviously, they not, did not achieve their desired outcome, uh, but that was problematic nevertheless. Um, they continued in the following elections through various verbal threats um, threatening instability if the DPP uh, were to be elected. And um, such um, verbal warnings continue in this election. Um, we've also found problematic uh, the chartering of flights and airline seats um, and 
um, pressuring Taiwanese business people in China um, to make political donations to the KMT party. Um, and a lot of names have been already revealed uh, in the local media. Um, so I'm just briefly sharing this with you as background information uh, in areas that we find problematic in terms of Chinese uh, intervention. Unfortunately, we do not have judicial or investigative authority in China to investigate the practice of vote buying or inappropriate economic leverage um, intervention in this election. Uh, but we will continue to work in a positive tone for the last two days in this election and um, I'm not allowed to legally talk about the polls now. We have a law in Taiwan which bans us from talking about polls within 10 days of the election. Um, but I think most of the people in our society um, know that this will be a very close race and uh, we are working hard um, to win this election. So I will just stop there with my um, presentation, but I want to show you two quick um, videos and one is a sample uh, TV commercial or advertisement that we have produced uh, that was uh, uh, during the New Year uh, period so on the new wish, uh, new wishes for 2012, and there are short subtitles on the top of the screen uh, for those of you who don't understand Mandarin. We'll show this one first. <laughs> presentation that all the piggies that we received, all the 143,000 piggies that came back to the campaign were individually opened downstairs. Um, this place was bustling with activities. We had um, about 200 volunteers at every given time opening the piggies, dumping out the coins into machines, and each individual piggy was counted. The, the amount of money in each piggy was counted and each individual who made the donation, there was a sticker on each piggy with the name of the donor um, and the relevant information legally required for us to report campaign donations. And each individual um, has been given a receipt for the piggy. And uh, this is a video of the piggy campaign.